in today's little videoette, we have a box to unbox and see what it is. Yes, quite exciting today because this box has come all the way from Mr. Hooverlux and should hopefully cre could create, contain some lovely polished vintage pieces of metal. So, let's see how it all came up. Yes, hello, good evening, my vacuum cleaner chums. How are you today? Yes, this box has come from my tame polisher. Everybody else in the world will know him as Dorian from Hooverlux. Yes, it was a bit Dorian from Hooverlux. Had a little bit of a thing for Kirby's, which is perfectly understandable. But of course, having a thing for Kirby's means that you generally have to learn to machine polish which he has done very well as you've seen on my channel the Hoover Model 800 that we both did the Electrolux cylinder that we've both done there's actually quite a lot of stuff that he's polished for me this is fine oh, I build his time accordingly for projects like these that aren't for my own machines and he seems to have posted it back just in a plastic tub Guess what? Right, there's one. Let's just pass the pass to this. Only I know what's in it. What the, the, the worst birthday party ever. Not that I ever have birthday parties. We need friends for those. Oh. Shut that door because I've got the washing machine on. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it survived its trip from Lincolnshire to Oxfordshire very well. What have we got here? We're just going to basically unbox it all. Oh no, the box is broken. Oh, is this for me? Please remove internal packaging carefully and raise the transit clip from the chime hammers. We're about to get like bell locks or something. Before altering the hands of the clock, is Mr. Dorian about to start collecting clocks? Who knows? Right, first thing out is this, which is the handle release latch part. Oh, it all looks so nice. Obviously, I've seen a few sneak peeks of this, but it's always different when it's in the flesh. This part here, these parts, are what locks the suction bit nozzle onto the machine you can see it twists and locks itself really so that's very good oh and this part as well I need to go back through all of my pictures oh it's so lovely and clean and shiny it does make all the difference what do we have here we have ah yes the brush strip for hard floor use okay they've come up very well wasn't a great deal of door you could do with that, because obviously you can't run that over the bench polisher. But what he's done is fantastic. That's a good thing about Mr. Hoover. He knows the limitations of the craft. And therefore, you yeah, could do it. Sorry. <laughs> but hey, everything else. Ooh, that's the, that's the clip that holds the bag on. Oh, here's a big piece. We have the main... <gasps> Oh, suction nozzle. Oh, perfect finger for another. It's a problem with this. I'm, I'm going to have to rebuff it anyway. Now, Mr. Dory did say that the metal is pitted. Now, it's from, it'll be from before 1920. It'll be from 1915, 16, you know, 17, that part of when. And, yeah, it's just the type of metal, I think, unless you really, you probably could with enough months of use mirror shine that with various grades of wet and dry but I'll be honest that's I don't think it was ever a mirror shine machine especially looking at this metal metal type don't think it was ever properly shiny anyway 
So that's fine. What do we have here? Ah, yes, we have. I only really said these two so we can clear the threads on them. They are the height adjustment knobs. Obviously, there's a couple of, you know, there's, there's, there's two machines worth here. And occasionally, I sent him a couple of the parts twice. Just, yeah, just about a backup. Really. These are also part of the bag housing mechanism. Oh, these have come up nice. These are the wiring protectors that go to the motor housing. And again, they're not mirror shiny, but they are so good. So, so good. The handle fork. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is most lovely. Indeed. This is the other part of this. This basically screws around here and clamps the bag on. And this is how, this is what, one way or another, I need to double check, clips the bag ah, onto this bracket here. Roughly like that. Oh, I can't even show you. You get the idea. There's a catch. Oh... Here we have the main motor housing. Oh, that looks so much better. Obviously, inside is quite clean as well. Oh, this is just brilliant, really. We have the top of the handle. Very good indeed. And, I oh yes, the other one of these, which I have to say possibly is the slightly better one. Okay, any duplicates, I'll go through and pick the best one, really. This is, I can't remember now, I think it's part of the handle bail assembly, something to do with that. I can't remember now without going through the pictures, but there's some metal parts anyway. Trying to save the best from that. It's one of the cord hooks. Very nice indeed. And then finally, really, we have the main casting for the machine. So it all ends up looking, if I can get this the right way round, Just a little bit like this. But it's all done. Doesn't that look better? Doesn't that look better? So we have kept number 84207. We decided that this was the best casting again, even though it's it's just so pitted and you would have to spend so much time and so much money sorting that out. Pointless. He also took this, which is from the Electrolux that I've got going. So that's lovely, but not actually part of this video. So that, in fact, actually I can show you a bit, because here's all the bits that I kept. So we have the cloth bag, which again is sadly quite faded, but <laughs> there's nothing I can do about that. This is the other casting. This is the other reason we couldn't use it, because that bottom screw won't come out. But... Here, see the difference that just a good polish makes. Makes all the difference. I've got the armatures here. Okay, they could probably do with this one. They've both been cleaned up. And I think on here is where the date stamp is. Is it on this one or is it on the armature? It might be on the armature. Yes, there it is. So, April 1920. Doesn't it look good for 1920s motor? Indeed. Actually, this is the other. I've, I, I forgot to send him this one. So, this is the other one of these. There you go. We have a bit of a comparison. Nice day, isn't it? 
and then we have the parts themselves. In fact, this is the bit of the handle, which I think is going to have to be repainted. I was going to leave it for the patina, but this machine's come up so well. And yeah, basically everything else you could possibly think of for an entire machine is sat in that tray. Here is, in fact, is this the same badge? Let me just double check this. Where have I put the casting? 84207. No. Here. Well, yes, I polished it because I remember this is what we're going to do. So there is our royal badge with matching serial number that once fitted should look very nice indeed oh thoroughly looking forward to this I know exactly what my job tonight is going to be assemble this lot into a vacuum cleaner and yeah basically I thought I would just film the unboxing of this. Big thank you to Mr. Hooverlux. I know he would accept any offer, legal or illegal. Morally wrong or morally right, and especially polishing. So if you have a vintage machine, obviously you would need to strip it apart, but he will happily run the parts through the shop blaster and polish them all up to look like this. Literally, this stuff is... 20, 20, 20 years old, yeah, 1980s, 100 years old, and it's come up so, so well. Hopefully, Mr. Royal himself would have been proud of what Mr. P.A. Gear over in Canada managed to achieve with their machines. So yeah, there we go, really, little short video unboxing these parts, and next time you see this machine will hopefully look a little bit different. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Stay tuned for the after video. And I, and this royal, will see you soon. Bye bye.